come to light for one of the great tests in all of sport. If you watched any Formula One race on TV last year, you saw some breathtaking action. But if you watched a lot of them, then you probably noticed a curious trend. Let me show you the highlights from the 2023 Hungarian Grand Prix as an example. Here's the start, and here is the leader. Now these highlights are the most interesting parts of the race, but as I move through them, the leader's not in any of them. He's not here, or here. In fact, we don't get a single highlight that involves the leading car until, ah, here. Red Bull on a day to celebrate for the team and driver has dominated once more. I watched dozens of these highlight reels and it's the same story in basically every one. One team is taking the lead and they're not giving it up. Red Bull wins one of the very best Formula One cars ever built. To have one team and particularly one driver at the front tends to happen in Formula One. We've just come out of a Mercedes Formula One team dominance. Before that, we had Red Bull again with Sebastian Vettel. And before that, we had Michael Schumacher in the Ferraris. But last year was the most dominant year that we've seen. The question is, how does Red Bull dominate F1? And is it a problem for the world's fastest growing sport? Lewis Hamilton now sets a new fastest lap of the race. In 2020, Formula One cars were the fastest they'd ever been, but cars were having trouble passing or overtaking each other. And some worried that was making the races a little boring. Team Mercedes had dominated the last seven years and nearly won in 2021. Then heading into 2022, F1 decided it was time for some new rules. So the big rule changes happen every three or four years. Scott Mansell is a former professional racing driver and creator of the Driver 61 YouTube channel. What you tend to see is over the development of the years, the cars just get quicker and quicker. And then the regulators have to come in, change the rules, slow the cars down a little bit because they get too fast for the circuits. And then the engineers go at it again. So it's this constant cat and mouse. This time, F1 also wanted to make overtaking easier, so they changed how teams could design the parts of the cars that interacted with the air. As the car passes through the air, it creates this big hole, which means if you're the following car, you have less grip because there's less air to go over your car to push it down into the track. Changing these parts forced teams to essentially come up with a whole new design strategy for 2022, and F1 hoped that would shake up the competition, and in a sense it did except that one team created a monster. Hey everyone, welcome back to Search Party. The sponsor for this video is Soylent. I know you're thinking about the movie where they make the thing with the people, but this Soylent is actually really quite good. And here's what it is. Soylent is a complete ready to drink meal. It's basically a ton of nutrition in one bottle. That includes the perfect synergy of macro and micronutrients backed by science, meaning they put their formula through clinical research and the ingredients work well together and it works for you. For example, it works great if your diet is designed to lower cholesterol. Soylent contains 20 to 30 grams of complete plant-based protein which would fulfill nearly half of your plant protein requirements, plus fiber, vitamins, and minerals. For years, I've struggled with uh, hanger management issues, and so I like Soylent because it keeps me full and therefore a better person all day. And it actually does taste good. Soylent consistently beats both dairy and plant-based competitors on creaminess, smoothness, and taste, and was recently awarded product of the year in a survey of 40,000 people by Canton Research. For a while now, chocolate has been my favorite, but this morning I recently tried this cafe mocha flavor, and since it's got a little bit of caffeine, I think it wins. And I think you should give it a shot. So here's the deal. The first 500 people to use this link and the code SP30 are gonna get 30% off their first Soylent subscription. I really think you should give it a shot. Thank you for Soylent for supporting Search Party. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so in order to explain exactly what Red Bull did, I need to talk a little bit about these cars. Now, they're extremely complicated and there's a million different parts that these engineers can do to gain an advantage. But like most search party videos, I think there's a simple animation we can fill that helps you understand the basic concepts and then I can get to exactly what Red Bull is doing better than anyone else. On the most basic level, F1 teams are trying to build a car that perfectly balances two things, downforce and drag. Downforce is when air pushes a race car down into the track. That's what these wings and floor are designed to do. Lots of downforce gives a car grip, allowing it to go really fast through corners without losing control. Gasly will try and hang on to it, but Verstappen's got the better grip. But increasing downforce also increases drag. 
That's the horizontal force of the air pushing against the front of the car. Lots of drag will make a car slower on the straightaways, so it's a trade-off. So there's no point in being really quick around the corners, but only going at 80% of the top speed down the straights. And so what we're looking for with the Formula One car is this aerodynamic efficiency, where you have high downforce, but you do that without creating too much drag. The secret for achieving that perfect balance is in the floor. There are generally two ways a car generates downforce, with the wings and with the floor. Wings push air up, which pushes the car down, but it's that pushing that creates a lot of the drag. Floors, on the other hand, generate downforce by shaping air in a way that pulls the car downward, like a suction cup. That pull can generate a lot of downforce without adding much drag. For years, F1 didn't allow teams to use their floors to generate much downforce, but starting in 2022, they did. So whichever team designed the best floor would have the best shot at finding that perfect balance. And it didn't take long until it was clear that was Red Bull. And Verstappen is on the wall path here. It's a harder compounded tire, but there's more grip and there's going to be no contest. That Red Bull is a rocket ship. This chart shows that after the first three races in 2022, Red Bull's car had the highest top speed, a sign of low drag. And no surprise, Red Bull won the race in Saudi Arabia on a course that's mostly straights. But then Red Bull began winning on curvy courses, like in Spain and Monaco, meaning its car had high downforce as well. Red Bull's car also didn't have a problem that was plaguing nearly every other team. This bouncing is what engineers call porpoising, and it's caused by the car's floor gaining and then losing that suction with the ground. Porpoising is a huge problem because the drivers can't see. It's so violent that the drivers can't see properly and their, their heads are moving around too much. But Red Bull's car didn't porpoise, evidence that it had designed a superior floor that worked seamlessly with the rest of the car. A Formula One car isn't just about one particular area, it's about how all these different areas work together in a holistic way. Their concept and how they've approached it and how the entire car works together and the motor have made that car incredibly good. In fact, most experts called it dominant. It was named the RB18 and Red Bull won 17 races with it in 2022. Then Red Bull won 21 races in 2023 with the improved RB19 which experts call it the most dominant car in F1 history. In February, Red Bull debuted a heavily updated 2024 car, and it's left many in F1 fearful that its advantage might even be bigger than in 2023. But a closer look at all these wins reveals the other reason for Red Bull's success. In every race, the team has two nearly identical cars, but two different drivers. And one is winning a lot more than the other. It would have been weird if Max Verstappen wasn't a good race car driver. Both his parents were racing legends, and they let him start racing karts at a young age. But when Red Bull signed him at age 17, he proved that he was more than good. He was great. He scored points in his second F1 race with Red Bull's junior team, Toro Rosso. Then he won his first race with Team Red Bull. And he's the youngest driver ever to win a Formula One World Championship Grand Prix. Can you explain why that's possible? Max is a robot. <laughs> no, seriously, his approach and his natural talent is outstanding. Pure focus, pure racing driver. He doesn't really care what anybody else thinks. The other thing is he has a very particular driving style. You can see it here and here. In fact, he does it hundreds of times every race. Cornering. Most drivers want to turn sharply through the corners in the fastest and most efficient way like this but it often requires a car that has a lot of weight in the front, which comes with the risk of losing control of the rear. So instead, most drivers prefer the weight towards the middle of the car. It helps keep the rear in control, but can sometimes force them to take a slightly slower path through the corner. Red Bull's car has a lot of weight in the front, but Max is unnaturally good at keeping the rear in control, so he can take the most efficient route through every corner, shaving off time and building a lead. In 2023, Verstappen won by an average of more than 13 seconds, an eternity in F1. His exceptional ability to control Red Bull's car is what sets Max apart from the other drivers, even his own teammates. Alex Albon just spoke on a podcast last week. He was his teammate for a couple of years, and he described it as Max liking the car like a game controller that's got sensitivity up to the max. And Alex said, the problem is you try and drive like Max, 
and you end up making mistakes. And then that means that you then lose confidence. And then in the end, you just have to lower everything down a little bit. You can't go quite as quickly. In this clip, Verstappen easily passes his 2023 teammate, who's driving a nearly identical Red Bull car. And there will be nothing that Perez can do. Max Verstappen takes the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. But also, Max didn't make any mistakes. Even in the very tricky situations where it would have been easy for Max to make a mistake and not win, he still won. That's how he broke the record for most wins in a season, the record for most wins in a row, and the most points ever. It was the most dominant season in Formula One history, and he's only 26 years old, meaning Red Bull will not only continue to have the best car, but likely the best driver for years. The question is whether or not that's a problem. It's very easy to look at Max winning over the last couple of years and being very dominant and say, oh, the rules are, you know, not quite right. But actually, when you look at the, the speed difference between the first and the last car, it's probably closer than it's ever been. Those highlight packages are evidence that F1's rule changes worked. The problem is, while middle of the pack action may satisfy the diehard fans, it might not be enough for the newer ones. Thanks to a popular Netflix show, Drive to Survive, F1 saw a huge number of new fans from the United States starting around 2019. And in 2021, these fans were immediately treated to one of the most exciting seasons in F1 history. Is it going to be a first world championship for Verstappen? Is it going to be an eighth world championship for Lewis Hamilton? Where can Verstappen try and get past Hamilton? But as Red Bull dominated 2023, American viewership has slipped. And it's led many to speculate that losing those new fans could be a huge problem for F1. At the end of the day, it's all about the show, right? I've been a Formula One fan all of my life. I will sit through it even when it's completely boring. But I know that a lot of fans won't do that. And so, yeah, of course, we want to see exciting wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. And I think if there's one driver or one team completely dominating, then it takes away from the show. But 2024 is the third season since the rule changes, and history tells us that time makes a difference. As you get towards the end for a regulation period, all of the teams get closer and closer together. So you'll see lots of battles. Whether that includes Max or not is a different story. All right, that's our 10th episode of Search Party. And I just want to thank all 300,000 of you for supporting the channel, especially the members. If you want to become a member, we've got lots of information on that in the description below. Now, a lot of you have been asking for us to upload more, and I'm proud to say that we're going to do it. This summer, we've got a lot of sporting events, Copa America, the Euros, the Olympics. And so we're going to do some extra videos covering those huge sports events. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much.